John Woodford here. Sorry about the voice. I'm getting over a crazy cold that I had for the last two and a half days or so. My son and I were both in bed snuggling, getting over it, but we are good. We're back. And I was super excited to get back into a routine of going live and we're here on Friday and because of the cold, I haven't been live yet. So I wanted to pop in here and I've got some really cool things to share with you today. And I'm going to try to, when I have these live streams with you guys, try to um, put a theme around them. And this first theme is going to be around the concept of overwhelm. I've got several questions that came in from viewers like you or subscribers or uh, students of ours. And some of the questions came in around the theme of overwhelm. So I want to talk to you about that, give you a couple of tips as well. I've also got a really cool piece of news in the tech space, specifically for WordPress users that I'd like to cover. But if you can see me and hear me, go ahead and put in the comments down below if you can. Uh, you got me. Okay, cool. Hey, Liz, how's it going? Fantastic to see you. And we got people here. So feel free if you're watching live, go ahead and put some comments down. Ask any questions you have at the end of the content I have prepared. I'll stick around for as long as my voice will allow me to and uh, just hang out with you guys and usher in a good weekend, hopefully. So I was in the process of ushering in a good weekend. Let me pull this thing up here. Awesome, hey Alicia. And I think you can see my screen, which is not on the right thing yet. There we go. So this was me about an hour ago, maybe an hour and a half at this point, uh, before coming live, I was test driving a boat. <laughs> so that's me surfing behind a boat in the lake that's behind our house. And it was phenomenal. And Susie, my wife, my lovely shining star was uh, on the boat praying for me. And then I convinced her to get into the water as well and surf behind the waves. But all her pictures are on her side on her <laughs> computer there. So it was super fun. I am definitely a uh, adrenaline junkie. I can barely talk today, but I had this thing scheduled, so I decided, yes, I am going to hop in the water and rock and roll, and it was super fun. Let me make sure I get my lights on here. So this was my morning uh, before coming live here, and yeah, so <laughs> the point being is that my wife and I, we started our online business many years ago, and if a lot of you are feeling overwhelmed, just know that like slowly making those consistent steps forward and trying to avoid those shiny objects that can get in our way um, helps you get to the point where you can schedule in some fun stuff in your life. You have that, that freedom, that bandwidth, that capability of adding in some joy that is not simply, you know, fighting and, and dealing with all the conflicts of, of building a business and starting online because there are a lot of things you have to deal with. So um, super fun. If anybody who's watching either the replay or this live stream has ever done any wakeboarding, wake surfing, surfing the ocean, or water skiing, any fun like adrenaline junkie sports, let me know in the comments down below. I am just now getting started with surfing. I surfed growing up on the east coast of Florida in Jacksonville, and um, it was fun, but you always had to like triangulate when the weather is right and the wind is blowing the right direction and the water temperature is okay, and you can bum a ride or you can drive over to the beach, and it was like so impossible. You had to be this whole cartographer and meteorologist to like find the right conditions. And once you live on a lake and you can get one of these super fancy boats that creates a wave, all you need to do is have some sunshine and you can have an amazing endless wave behind your boat, which is super fun. So that's a little bit about me, a little some fun personal stuff there. So one thing around the theme of overwhelm that a lot of people get stuck in is this idea of setting up your WordPress hosting and then getting your domain all hooked up and then finding your page builder and making all these decisions. And especially in the beginning when you may not even know which direction your business is going in, that overwhelm can be absolutely paralyzing because you don't necessarily know which direction your business is going to take. You don't know if you need an e-commerce website, if you need a funnel, if you need what the case might be. You might have an inkling in your mind, but so much can change as you you grow and develop and keep taking those steps forward. So that overwhelm in the beginning, I see get so many people stuck. And one of our courses, Blog by Number, goes through that entire process of choosing your name, selecting your niche, creating your website, creating content. And truth be told, there's a lot of steps in that course. There's a lot of things to go through. And wherever it's possible to take shortcuts, it's worth considering. I'm not going to say that every shortcut should be taken because oftentimes you have to go through the hard work or when you take a shortcut, it might really pigeon toe you in to a certain thing or a certain way of building your business and it loses some of the flexibility of growing and um, advancing your business as you need to. 
We use WordPress on our business and we recommend a lot of people to use WordPress because it gives you kind of any direction you want to go. It's a choose your own adventure novel when it comes to building your online business because it can do everything and it can do it all pretty well with enough patience and uh, persistence. So today's little tech update here is something called Elementor Cloud. We'll take a look at their sales page, but this is one of those uh, shortcuts that may be worth considering. And this solves the problem of your hosting, of what page builder to use, of what theme to use, a lot of that stuff. It, it, it's kind of like going into one of those all-in-ones that don't use WordPress, but Elementor Cloud is pretty interesting because it still allows you what it seems like, all the flexibility of your WordPress solutions, your little plugins, all these different things you wanna do while still reducing some of the complexity. So that's what we're gonna take a look at real fast here. And let me go ahead and show you, we're on the page here for Elementor Cloud. And I think you guys can see my screen. And cool, okay, fantastic. All right, I got some questions here, fantastic. I'll cover all these questions when we get into the Q&A. So I'm looking through here on the sales page of Elementor Cloud. And what it allows you to do is combine the drag and drop editing of Elementor with WordPress, but trying to eliminate some of the tech overwhelm of having your own hosting. You know, yeah, don't sweat the technical stuff. Um, now, I personally have not used this yet. I'm curious if, if this little overview, this first impression gives you guys the, ooh, this looks like it's perfect for me. Let me know, I'm happy to buy an account and uh, check it out myself and give you my a deeper opinion. But I saw this as being a nice little news story to go along with the theme of overwhelm because you know stuff like this, SSL certificates, daily backups, site lock. Most hosts, most good web hosts will include stuff like this. But at the same time, it's just one more checkbox for you to have to ensure, one more checkbox that needs to be set up properly. And if you're just getting started and you're focused on, you know, like creating content, building an audience, launching offers for goodness sakes, like nowhere in that setup of tasks you have to do, that set of tasks, should you be worried about like your daily site backups and, and things that can really trip some people up. And what I really like about this, because there were options like Brizzy Cloud, and let me just show you here. So brizzy.com, oops, I think it's brizzy.io. Yeah, here we go. So Brizzy is similar to Elementor. It helps you build pages on WordPress, all this stuff. Um, it's cool, it's very cool. And they have their own cloud version, which I haven't been to their website in forever, so I'm probably gonna screw it up. Let's see here, hosting, no, that's just hosting. So again, a little confusing here, but they have their cloud platform, there it is, that does not run on WordPress. And when I first heard that Elementor was doing their own cloud setup, I was like, oh, this is not worth it because the idea of taking a WordPress design builder and then leaving WordPress in the dust, yes, it simplifies a lot of things, but you really lose a lot of functionality that you're probably gonna want long-term. So I think Elementor Cloud is one that's more worth looking into than something like Brizzy Cloud because you have all the strength of WordPress without some of the complexity. You know, some things that might be tricky to do are still easy to do because it's all handled for you. And oftentimes when you have different uh, heavy plugins. I say heavy, meaning they do a lot. Like Elementor can build pop-ups, it can do a theme builder, it can design your header, your footer, all the content on your page. There's so much that Elementor can do on your site that it tends to be a little heavy and it can have conflicts. It can be tricky for all web hosts to work well. Luckily, because Elementor is so popular, most web hosts already are configured to be good with um, Elementor, but sometimes it can be tricky. You'll have conflicts, and wherever possible, in a situation like this, it's nice because you have a pretty darn good uh, expectation that things will be steady state. You won't have to worry about your tech, and you know they're showing here ACF, Learn Dash, Woo. These are all very popular WordPress tools, tools that people expect to use when they're in a WordPress website. You know, WooCommerce to sell things, Learn Dash to create an online course. Now, of course, there's tons of options, tons of choices to use within that, but uh, it's nice to know that these are already designed good to go. Now, here's where things get really interesting. So if you expect to set up a decent budget hosting package, like you go to Bluehost or SiteGround or Cloudways, you're gonna expect to pay beyond any like promotional pricing in the beginning, you're gonna expect to pay 10 to 20 bucks a month for hosting. Once your website starts to need some actual traffic, 
uh, you're going to pay a little bit for hosting. You're also going to have to pay for plugins to run your website. And Elementor alone is about 50 bucks per year for the plugin. And now what this is showing you here is that you can get all the plugin goodies, all that stuff added in, as well as all the website stuff, the, the host, not a domain. Like you still need to buy your domain and link that up. There'll be a future video on the what I'm doing for all my new domains using Cloudflare. It's fantastic um, and it's brand new. It's so, so nice. Um, but for a very affordable price, 100 bucks a year, you have your website mostly taken care of while preserving a lot of the strength you have inside of the WordPress ecosystem. It's pretty cool. Um, it's one that is worth looking at if you are already up and you're running and you're running your own hosting and you're set. Don't worry. You don't need to add overwhelm by switching around. But if you're having a ton of issues, maybe you just haven't found your groove. Maybe you're trying to use the block builder in WordPress and you're just not getting it. Don't worry. It's not your fault. It's not the most easy to use yet. It's getting way, way better every single day, but it's not the easiest yet. Elementor is Really, really easy, really fantastic. Um, it's a builder that we still use off and on for different projects. I'm trying to get more into using the built-in block builder, but it is definitely still a powerful one that you can use. And for $100 a year for the website taken care of, it might be worth throwing the, you know, like tossing the dice in there and taking a look at it. I'm curious, I'm, I'll be looking at the end of this video, at the comments to see if you guys think I should dive deeper into this one, but I wanted to make sure you were aware of it because I don't want you to get overwhelmed with the tech aspect of setting up your website. And what's cool about Elementor Cloud is that once you set up your account, you log in like you'd expect to do for any online service and you can manage your website there. You don't need to worry about this crazy, um, what is it called? Um, the C panel. Sorry, I'm still getting over my cold. The C panel and all the other tech stuff that can be tricky. Um, so pros and cons, it's worth taking a look at. The one downside I would say about looking at this is let's say three months down the road, you decide that you want to be more of a purist and you want to only use the WordPress builder. You want to remove as much bloat as possible from your website. So you want to take Elementor off now. Well, part of the pricing with Elementor Cloud is the fact that you're planning on using Elementor. So it's not exactly a lock-in because there's nothing forcing you to use a specific tool set, but it's one that can uh, promote you to use a specific way and you might feel like you're being inefficient and you might be wasting some budget it because if you want to pay for a different premium tool, you have to replace it. So it's one of those where it's good if you want options to be taken care of. I, I listened to a podcast the other day and the guy was talking about diet and he said that he found freedom in constraint. Meaning if you are ever one of those that you want all the options in the world because you might want something to be perfect. And I'm one of these people, by the way, I like knowing what all the options are out there. The problem is though, so much freedom in the choices means you can't make any choices sometimes. And there's some freedom in the constraint of saying, hey, I'm going to use this builder, I'm going to use this hosting, and now I'm going to go and build my business. And so that's one tip to help you with uh, relieving some of the overwhelm you might have. That being said, um, something else that can help, if you're in the process of getting your business set up and you're actually trying to turn leads into customers, I would like to cordially invite you to head on over to Unbeatable Tech dot com slash funnel blueprint and i recently updated my blueprint for how we personally build funnels it has definitely evolved over the years and this is essentially um eight years now of understanding and knowledge around sales funnel building and we try to keep it very simple and actionable it's actually a fillable pdf where you can kind of plug in your information and have a guide as you're going through building out your funnel. We are always looking at ways of simplifying how we do our funnels, our processes, and we'd love to share that with you. All right, now, next thing on the agenda, I've got a couple questions here, and then I'll get into the questions from the live stream. So let me pop over here, and we'll go here, and I think you guys can see me. I'm on the right scene. Cool. So I've got a couple questions, um, and these are questions that came from people who... Um, <clears throat> use our affiliate link to purchase some products that we recommended and I offer support to them. So they ask questions and I come in here and I'm gonna send this video to them as well so they can get their question answered. If you're ever interested in checking out some of our current bonuses, you can go to unbeatabletech.com slash bonus and you can take a look at what we're currently offering and supporting as a bonus offer for affiliates. So moving on here, the first one's from Diane. She says, I'm overwhelmed with it all. I just want to be able to get my products out there so I can move forward instead of feeling like I'm in a hamster wheel. 
And Diane, I feel you. I totally understand where you're coming from. And trust me, you're, there's nothing wrong with you. Like you are right on track. It is incredibly overwhelming. I'm, I'm sick. I'm going to take some water before I answer the question. All right. There's a few things I would say to help you out, Diane. First, the question's a little bit vague. I'm not entirely sure which part you're confused with. When I hear you want to move forward instead of feeling like you're in a hamster wheel, you want to get your products out there, let me share a little story with you. My first product that I launched and sold on the internet, I did not even have a WordPress website at the time. I did not have a following. I did not have a social media presence or anything like that. I literally, I, I found a software tool when I was still in corporate America. And let me kind of bounce over here and I'll show you. Um, my first online product, uh, let's see here, Airtable course, Udemy. And I'm gonna go over here and let's see if I even show up. I have not taken, oh, look at that. I'm still one of the first results, okay? So that's me, John Whitford. I launched this one, um, how long ago was this? It was uh, probably in 2016 or so. Let's see, okay, yeah, last updated 2016. So I probably launched it in like January of 2016, okay? Why did I do that? And here I, I teach WordPress, I teach blogging, YouTube, I teach affiliate marketing, all these things where you own your own platform. Now, why did I do this? Why did I launch a course on a separate platform on Udemy? And this is something that we don't really recommend all that often, um, but it's something that we're really considering not revising, but adding to our recommendations. The most powerful thing in business is creating momentum and feeling focused. What do I mean by that? Like. WordPress can be a pain in the butt to get started. Kind of go back to our previous segment. We talked about like having any way of removing some of those friction points in getting up and running and seeing results. That's great when you can remove those friction points. Now let's take that from the idea of content creation with blogging to now selling products. Well, what are you trying to sell? Are you trying to sell printables? Are you trying to sell eBooks? Are you trying to sell courses? Well, for me, I still had a full-time job. Not only did I have a full-time job, I think I had one baby, we were pregnant with our second baby, very pregnant at that point with our second baby. And I was working probably 50, 60 hours a week. I had a brand new job. I got promoted and I was running a team of 40 people in a corporate thing that was across multiple states. I had three different facilities I had to manage. I was bonkers busy there. Not only that, my wife was with her first and, and second baby, our, not her first, but our first and second baby. She was starting to build a blog as well, starting this whole journey we were on. Okay, so there wasn't a whole lot of margin in the day. There wasn't a whole lot of free time for me to go and start all that process. So I found a tool. I, I started to see that online courses was a cool opportunity, but I, I saw the I saw the forest. I, I didn't just see the individual steps. I saw the entire forest of all the work that went into building the audience and selling it on my own. And what I decided to do is, hey, let me just throw out a minimum viable product. Let me take an idea. This is a tool that's, that was brand new, and that's something that I love to do. I love to find the newest, the latest, and greatest tools and kick it around and see how they work. So I figured out this tool. I said, hey, this is pretty interesting, but I, I don't see anybody really talking about it. Let me just try this online course thing. I bought a little microphone. It was actually a cheaper one than this one back then that I'm talking into now. I recorded, I think it was three and a half, four hours of content on how to use this tool. Um, I set it up for my mom because she was running a, a, a dog boarding kennel at the time. And so I showed her how to use it to be a like a customer relationship manager tool. And I put it out there. I had zero audience. I have not written a single blog post, made a single YouTube video or anything about the subject matter. But I just wanted to prove the concept and see if it would work. And still to this day, it took a little while for it to um, ramp up, but it still sells every day, or not every day, but I, I make about $100 per month on this course, and um, it's valuable. It, add, it adds value there. Now, I decided not to build my entire business off of platforms like Udemy or Etsy or any of those uh, marketplace platforms because there is a number of downsides in those marketplace platforms. However, when you're first getting started, if you're feeling the way that you're feeling here, let me go back to your slides. If you're feeling that way, or you're just overwhelmed, you wanna be able to sell your products and move forward, I don't want you to think that you have to do it a specific way. I want you to find the easiest way that allows you to find momentum, that forward progress. And one of the things that Susie is starting to do, you know, I, I talked about online courses and, and Udemy is a solid option. If you want to just go and put something out there and, and just test out the waters, 
there's nothing wrong with that. They take care of most of the work. There's not a whole lot of tech. You saw I'm currently running a sale on my course on Udemy. I didn't set that up. I said, Udemy, do whatever you want to. I'm not interested in maximizing my profits or changing my pricing. I have no funnels, no list or anything like that for that little sub side business, but it brings in about $100 a month and that's fantastic. So for you, Ask what it is you're trying to create and sell, offer the world. If it's something like a digital product, maybe printables, maybe an ebook, something like that. Uh, Susie has been adding to printables by number. We're actually in the process of updating it for everybody who's a current student of printables by number. Uh, you will get those updates as they come out very, very soon. If you don't know about it, trust me, the price is going to go up on printables by number. So if you're interested in learning everything I'm about to talk to you about, you can go to printablesbynumber.com and check that course out. It's fantastic. It's one of Susie's favorites. It's it's up there for me. It's not my favorite, but it's up there for me. Um, I, I just I, I'm not really a printable seller. That's not my not my game. However, um, point of all that was inside of Printables by Number, we've been heavily focused on just creating your own platform, on using platforms like Thrivecart Learn or ConvertKit or WordPress to be able to build your own online store that has your own digital products that you can create and sell and scale. And it's still the best way to go, hands down, in the long term. But if you're in that feeling of overwhelm, I want you to think about how many, like if, if you've got an engine in a car and it's got thousands of, thousands of parts moving, and if you're kind of a new technician or if you're not a technician at all and you're trying to figure out what part is broken or what you need to do next to make the car engine work properly, I would way rather have five moving parts to deal with and diagnose than 500 moving parts to diagnose and figure out what's going on. And in that scenario, using something like an Etsy or something like a Udemy, when you're getting started and building steam and building confidence and motivation and momentum, there's nothing wrong in using those hosted platforms. You can get up and running in a couple of hours. I think Susie set up her online store and she recorded the entire process to put it onto Printables by Number. She's also interviewing some experts that have advanced strategies to use in those third third party marketplace platforms like uh, Etsy, you can get up and running in a day or two and at least start the ball rolling. And from there, just because you put your products onto a specific platform doesn't mean that's the only platform they can exist on. You can then take those products and prove the concept off of those marketplaces. But then as you start to build your own audience and start to create your own business model and can drive traffic to your own store, you're gonna wanna take that off of Etsy or at least offer it in a separate place where you can create upsells, downsells, funnels, backend offers, integrations with your email, all those moving parts, right, of the business, which can make the business sing and make it scale really, really well. However, it does add some complexity, some other additional thoughts you need to put in there. And if you're in the overwhelm mode, that would be a place to consider. All right. Hope that was helpful, Diane, and uh, feel free to let me know. And uh, I will be getting with more questions in just a second. Here's the next question while I drink a little bit of water. All right, so this next question came in and oh goodness, I think this was Liz, but I forgot to put the name down here. So, so sorry, I didn't properly put credit for the question here. Big question, so I'm gonna cover the, the key points here. So they're putting up some uh, small price products onto Thrivecart using a Thrivecart Learn platform, which is fantastic. And she's asking about how to deliver. Should she deliver her products using the direct PDF download file for eBooks and craft patterns? Should she use her WordPress site files or use a third party hosting platform like bunny.net? Now I've done some video content in the past about Bunny and that was mainly around the idea of video hosting. If you want to have a course that has a bunch of videos in it and you want people to be able to securely access them, when I say securely, I'll use air quotes because pretty much anything on the internet, if people want to be a twerp and download it against your will, you can't stop them from recording their screen, putting it on play and walking away for two hours. It stinks. I don't like it. I don't do it. I don't recommend anybody does it. It's not an honest thing. It's not a very good thing to do. However, point being is I don't want people to get stuck on the perfect way of doing something. An imperfect plan executed now is way better than the perfect plan never implemented. I think that was a George Patton quote back in World War One days? One? I think so. Anywho, so point being, bunny.net is one more moving part of the engine. It's helpful, especially if you're doing videos. Um, it's helpful because 
It's extremely affordable, and I do like looking out for you guys and recommending tools that are extremely affordable while offering the tool set you need. Um, you can also use YouTube, which is free, has a lot of downsides. In the Bunny video, um, that you can search my channel for uh, video hosting, and you'll find that video very quickly. Uh, that is one that would be worth an upgrade. But specific to this question around selling PDF files, uh, eBooks, things like that, doesn't matter. I would be fine with just dragging that file onto your Windows or onto your WordPress media gallery. And then inside of Thrivecart, when you're selling the product and you're choosing how to fulfill the product, so you can say, hey, send them to a URL and you can copy and paste the URL from your window, or oh, sorry, I keep saying Windows, your WordPress media file, just paste that into um, the URL for the fulfillment. Bada bing, bada boom, and you're done. You don't need to create a course inside of Thrivecart Learn. You certainly can. Um, I like it, but you don't need to. For looking for the simplicity, you can always do it that way. Now, just real quick here, why do I like setting things up as courses instead of simply delivering a PDF file? There's two main reasons, maybe three, but two off the top of my head, and my head is still very cloudy. So reason number one is it's easier for you to update the products over time. I would love to say, like for example, you're selling an ebook, right? So imagine, like I've bought so many books multiple times, like physical books, especially back in the day, I was big into Wall Street trading and stocks and all that. I'm an engineer, I love the, the geeky numbers and all that stuff. And <clears throat> there was um, What Works on Wall Street was one of the books, I think it was. And I would buy the third edition, I would buy the fourth edition, I would buy the fifth edition, right? I think that guy made all his money off of selling the book, not off of trading stocks, because I never really made that much money in the stock market. Um, anywho, the physical book, I had to buy the next edition when it came out, right? I wasn't buying ebooks of that stuff. Um, with your ebook, let's say, for example, that you're only uh, giving them a URL when they buy. Okay. So they click the buy button on the thank you page, they download their ebook, and they're good. The transaction is over. What happens when the next iteration of the book comes out? Well, one, you could have them just go and buy it again. Uh, it's up to you, up to you. Nothing wrong with that. A lot of people do that and do very well. Um, or you could hopefully have a good integration or a zap with your email platform. Let's say Thrivecart connects to MailerLite or ConvertKit or whoever you're using. And you could send them an email saying, oh, hey, by the way, there's a new updated file. Here's a link to download it. But it's an email. It's not exactly the, the best. And so it's nice to be able to update the file. And again, email out to your entire list. Let's say, hey, I've updated it. If you're a current student, you can get it on this lesson. If you haven't got it yet, now is the best time to get it. Click here to buy. And in doing that, it's a good promotional activity. It shows you standing behind your products. Um, kind of like how I mentioned that Printables by Number is coming in the next couple of weeks. So that's us standing behind our products. Um, and it also, it, it gives a nicer experience for the users. Instead of hunting around for an old email or whatever, they can just log in and access their bonuses. That's the first reason for a better update. The second reason is that you can add more to the book. Selling a book is great. There's nothing wrong with selling a book, but a book is a commodity. I, I, this is a book. I'm rereading The 12 Week Year. It's a fantastic book. I'm trying to be a bit more productive. We've got so many things to do this year on the business, which I'm excited for, and I want to make more time for surfing. So um, I'm, I'm working through this book. I bought this book. I think I paid like $17 for it, and I, I would pay more for it because I really, really do value what's in it, but it's just a book. Now, what you can do differently, because you may not have the same testimonials, the same social proof, the same experience in the industry or accolades or anything like that, is turn your book into an irresistible offer by adding additional stuff to it. Now, you can do that inside the book itself. You could say, hey, buy the book, and then maybe there's a, a chapter that has links to all these special bonuses, but it doesn't come across at the same level of polish as if you were to say, hey, when you buy this book, you also get this training, you get this checklist, you get this progress report, you get these template files, you get this swipe copy or whatever is relevant for you. And by having an actual course area where that content can all be housed, it looks more professional, it gives across a better light, makes it better to update. And um, I guess, yeah, I got a third reason there. Uh, not only that, but now if you have additional courses down the road, you know, more, more than likely your simple files like your eBooks and stuff are going to be front end products. They're going to be the lower priced products in your value ladder or in the entire customer journey that you're going to offer over time. And over time, 
you're going to want to have a members area where there's more dynamic stuff. Maybe it's a membership, a community, coaching, something like that. With Thrivecart, it wants everything inside a funnel to be the same type of thing. Like if you're just selling um, a, a URL, it wants the upsells and downsells to also be URLs. So in this scenario, if you make everything a course, the course can do whatever you want it to do. It's basically just a locked out members area. And then you have a lot of flexibility in what you can offer as upsells and downsells. You're not stuck into a box like that. All right, so I hope that helps there. Um, but just to go back to the, the concise answer here, if you just wanna sell a PDF file and you wanna keep as few moving parts as possible, just drag that sucker into your WordPress media gallery. I got it right that time. And you can take that URL and paste it in as the delivery or the success URL, I think is what it's called in Thrivecart, and you'll be good to go. All right, cool. Let me bounce out of there and let me pop over to the comments here. I'll put some comments up on the screen. And I got 17 people watching. Fantastic. Hope this is helpful for you guys. I'm going to go back to the top, which is here, and see what's going on. Thank you, Liz. Hello, Alicia. Hey, Adam. Hey, Debbie. Uh, who was driving the boat, little man? No, no, that would be great though. One day. No, we, um, so I'm in the market. I'm in the market for a boat and I'm finding that uh, there's some really nice dealerships that will bend over backwards for you to go and maybe buy their boat. So some guy, uh, just not some guy, the the salesperson from the dealership, they had one that came into inventory. We we talked about it the other day. We scheduled this little meeting, and he put the boat into the water and drove it straight to our backyard, and we hopped off our dock onto the boat and was off to the races. So super nice. I don't know if this is the right one, but uh, I'm enjoying the the shopping process certainly. Oh, Renata, thank you so much. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Happy to help you guys out. Alrighty. Barb. All right, let's go through here. Okay, and I see part of the question here that I need to answer and make like a public service announcement. All right, let's see. Barb says, hey, John, purchase Thrivecart Pro. Oopsies. Wait, why'd it go away? It's on this thing where it's automatically following off. Okay, sorry. Hey, John, purchase Thrivecart Pro and learn plus through you on April 7th. Okay, it's April 22nd. But the awesome bonus of 30-day support has still not been unlocked for you. Can you make that happen, please, and extend? Yes. Yes and yes. Um, thank you, Barb. Send me an email directly at john at unbeatabletech.com. And I'll also explain to everybody else who might be watching, I am doing a better job now of trying to set up a process that was easy to follow for everybody. And Barb, I think, is just stuck in that little uh, time frame of it kind of being weird in the transition. Um, before I was offering email support and going forward, I'm going to be doing this where I take those questions in a bit more of an organized fashion and I answer them live and then also clip it out and send it to the individual requester. So I'm hoping to increase my level of service by helping guys out in a better way and answering them better than I can in the simple little response back. But in doing that, I had to do some techie stuff inside of Thrivecart and I think this might not have uh, transferred over to Barb. So Try to send an email. Try to send an email. Um, Barb, okay, that's interesting. You tried to send an email, but it bounced. Did you send it to John at Unbeatable Tech? Because I've I've been emailing. You might have gotten my autoresponder, which I put on because I was sick. But um, I'll I'll double check you, Barb, and we'll make sure we take care of it. I promise. All right, and then Liz is. Oh, thanks for backing me up. Uh, also purchased via John and got an, an email pretty fast. So I, emails should be working. Okay, we'll figure you out, Barb, I guarantee you. Okay, yeah, and because Barb, I, I separated out the bonus support into a separate members area, so it's for internal reasons and all this stuff, organization. Um, you should have that, but if not, I will go in and I'll, I'll look up your name as well and make sure you get that. Okay, Liz is asking, I have Divi. Would this be a useful adjunct or overkill? Um, Divi and Elementor are pretty much direct competitors. They're in the exact same category. Oh, that was too much. Let's try to do this. Try to make this bubble a bit better. Um, Divi and Elementor are... There we are. They're very similar tools. Um, different, I would say like different personality types. Like I think a bit more the designer is interested in Divi. I feel like it's personally a bit more fluid and easier to work with. Elementor is, I would say, the overall more powerful of the two. Um, point being, if you have one that works for you, 
rock and roll. There can be a ton of overwhelm that comes in from trying to bounce around and find the best. I've found that the best is the one that works for you. If you're happy with Divi, like you can do any, at this point, they've all become very similar. Divi Elementor, um, there's a few that are lagging behind, but Divi Elementor, Oxygen, even um, Gutenberg Blocks, you can pretty much do whatever you want to with enough patience and creativity. Um, so if you have one that's working for you, I would just rock and roll. Um, I, I find that it's very personality driven uh, for whatever reason. I use one that is not very popular. I, I like Thrive Architect and it's just because um, it works with my brain for some reason. So, <laughs> But if you're having issues with your hosting and things like that, that's where I see Elementor Cloud could help out a little bit there. Would you need a separate, that's a great question, Barb. Will you need a separate email provider if using Elementor Cloud, please? Um, so what Barb, I think, means by that is when you sign up for Bluehost, let's say, Bluehost will handle also your email hosting. So not only will you be able to set up your you know, Barb at um, website.com domain, you also handle the sending and receiving of your professional email with that hosting. The way it seems, um, it does sound as though this is just website hosting and you're going to need some other email hosting. That being, and so that's like a, that's a bummer, right? That's kind of a negative. At the same time, it's pretty quick where you're going to want to have probably a Google suite, Google workspace, they're calling it now, like a Gmail. We're, we're all used to Gmail. Um, and then going into like the professional email hosting that Bluehost provides, it's kind of, um, it's, it's a step down from the user experience, the speed, um, all that. So even though we have like five different web hosts, we, we do a lot of different fun things. And each one of them offers email hosting. We still choose to have Google as our uh, workspace email hosting. Cuts down on any spam emails. Um, it's just more secure. Uh, there's a lot of benefits in doing that. You know, Having the Google Meet built in is helpful for our specific business. Having the calendar integrate nicely. All those things are great. Um, you might not need that in your business. And in those cases, the basic email hosting is fine. So that's where um, the, the cloud idea, it is great. But again, as I said earlier in that segment, it also does come down to, do I need this or is this now pigeonholing me into a specific process when I want the flexibility? That's one of the nice things about the Bluehost and SiteGrounds is email hosting only costs about like a dollar a month to get like decent email hosting or you can get it for free using like Zoho, Zoho Mail, I think it's called. So there's a lot of options out there, but again, there's additional moving parts in your engine that you may not need. All right, let's see here. Natalie, all right, <clears throat> question. You mentioned that Thrivecart Learn would be added to Printables by Number. I can't seem to find it. I also looked in Course by Number, and it's definitely in Courses by Number, and in the Printables by Number, it is being updated right now. So that will be added in. Um, inside a Course by Number, it is in a specific module, which I will probably not going to spend time like scrolling through the course to find it since we're already live for about 37 minutes, but it is inside a course by number. There's an entire section, entire new module dedicated to the learn platform for courses in course by number. It's um, there's like two or three modules of all the tech and it's a brand new one. Um, so I think it was like grade 9.5. I think I had to add an additional grade to it because it was uh, so meaty. And Natalie, if you can't find it, um, you also, I'm just wondering, Natalie, uh, we did move all of our courses over to Thrivecart Learn. So if you're logging into the Teachable platform to access it, all the updates are on the new platform. You should have been emailed all your new credentials and all that stuff, but you can go to, um, goodness gracious, you can just email support if you'd like to, and, and we'll take care of you. Make sure that you're on uh, the new platform where you get all the updates going forward. All right, Lovain, Lovain Cohen, that's a beautiful name. If I want to create a 14 to 20 page guide to sell as an ebook, are you saying I shouldn't leave it in PDF format? Ooh, am I saying the A? No, I'm certainly not saying anything like that. Okay, what you might have, uh, you're probably referring back to when I was talking about having, you know, instead of just selling a book, selling an offer that has additional stuff in it, right? Um, when I, let me clarify a little bit on that. I think that's where you're coming from. The, the book is still part of that offer. Right? So in that case, let's say you have uh, maybe a miniature training as well as the book, as well as maybe a template, something like that. That instantly increases the value beyond the price point that people would expect to pay for just a book in itself. So in that scenario, 
The book can still be a PDF. Nothing wrong at all with that. We still sell, we, we have eBooks as part of our offers and those eBooks tend to be in PDF format. So that's all the same. But what I'm suggesting is if you were to house all of that great content into a Thrivecart Learn platform, into an actual like course area or members area, I say course area with air quotes a lot because that's, I don't want to pigeonhole it into saying like everything that has a login is now a course. That's just not true. So we're going to call it kind of just a members area, a locked uh, premium area in general. The template could be maybe a Excel workbook, or it could be a link to a Google sheet, or it could be, I don't know, an Airtable database, since I talked about Airtable earlier in the live. So that could be its own separate thing, and maybe that lives in its own lesson of your members area, your own specific post inside your members area. So, and then you have templates as well. Maybe the templates is just a link to Canva, where maybe you design some templates to help them do the thing that your book explains. So... I'm simply saying you're taking the one book, which could be a PDF file, and you're turning that into maybe a multimedia experience that adds additional value in other ways. So I hope that clarifies. Um, as far as the ebook itself, yeah, aside from PDF, when I, for example, um, let me grab it real fast. So I did, uh, I wrote a book uh, last summer in June. It's time for an update for this as well. And I decided to actually record my entire process doing this. And uh, so it's called Freedom by Number. And this is kind of the overall f uh, format and framework of how we do everything inside of our business. And you can get that if you want to go by going to freedombynumber.com slash book. But what's cool about this is when I sell this online, I sell it in a few different formats. One, if you can go to Amazon and get it, or you can... Uh, buy it print on demand and it'll ship directly to your house in the physical copy. Um, but also it can be sold as an ebook. And when I sell this as an ebook, I, I practice what I preach. They buy it and they get their members area and you can either download it as a PDF. That's one option. You also have the EPUB version, which is what can like automatically convert it into a Kindle book and you can load it onto your Kindle. Um, and I think that's the only two versions. Like that, that's, that's it. And then there's, there's also an audiobook version, which is a series of MP3 files that you can load onto your phone and whatnot. Um, and then on top of that, you can buy it from the Kindle, you know, from Amazon as a Kindle book. So um, point being is that the format of the content isn't so important. I like to give them options um, of which way it works for them. Oh, and here you have a clarification. Okay, great question. So your follow-up is the best way like for updates? Yeah, if it's a, like a PDF is a PDF, you can't automatically update a PDF. I would not recommend um, selling a like a Google Doc. Like I guess the, that's the only thing you can update in real time, but that's probably not a very good idea. So I would certainly sell it as a PDF. And um, as I mentioned earlier, if, if it's just a PDF and there's not a, a members area for them to log into, you'll either have to email them their updates or maybe sometime they can find it. Or um, the members area is nice because they can always go in and download the latest version when you update it there. Ah, great question. Natalie asks, when I use Thrivecart for sales pages, etc., is it separate from my WordPress site or is it connected as a plugin? Great question. Um, the simple answer is it's a separate tool. There's a separate page, basically. So um, there's a couple ways of doing this to where it could feel exactly like your website. But in its most raw, most basic form, you're going to have a sales page, which could either be written on Thrivecart, like in all of our templates, uh, which we uh, released recently, have beautiful templates. Let me just show you so you get an idea. Um, let me come in over here. So freedom by number.com slash thrive cart templates. So the, for example, this is a little bit meta. So this page, the actual, the, this page we're reading through right now is built inside of thrive cart. So this is a sales page and it's selling sales page templates <laughs> and the sales page templates that it's selling are also built in thrive cart. So this is like three levels of meta here, <laughs> but you know, all these examples. So coach of five, for example, this is a template built inside of thrive cart, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, man. And here it's working just fine for us. So weird. Oh, inside thing. I'm playing with here. Okay. So you can build your entire sales page as a thrive cart page, but now notice you can see here, 
the top of the page, this has my.freedombynumber.com slash blah, 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 blah. Well, that is how we set up our Thrivecart account so that whenever somebody buys, like no matter what they're buying, whenever they're going to one of these pages, it has my.freedombynumber.com as our custom domain. And custom domain is simply like the, the, the address that people go to find your Thrivecart account. So that's all well and good. If you have a website, um, let's just call it um, you know, johnwhitford.com, you could set up your Thrivecard account to be checkout.johnwhitford.com and you're all set and, and wait, made in the shade. That's one way. The other way you could do it is, let's say for example, so inside of, let's just go to, um, what's a good example here? Well, let's just go to freedombynumber.com and we'll go to our products page as an example. And this show, oh, let me show my screen. And this shows all of our products. Let's say this was a sales page and I wanted to not ever take them over to Thrivecart's account. You can certainly do that. All you would do is inside of Thrivecart when you're designing the product, like designing the page that would be the checkout page or the sales page, you can simply make it an embeddable option, an embed option. And what that'll do is just give you the basic form, the checkout form, and you can build the page wherever you want it to be. And then just pop in like copy and paste the embedded form right wherever you want. Let's say you want it between where it says Jasper and master, <laughs> like Jasper bonus and master, you could actually paste that code right there. And you'd be able to have an embedded checkout form on whichever page, whichever domain, whichever builder element or whatever you want. And it'll work with all of that. And that's actually actually an example here where you can actually see here uh, one of the designs we have in our template pack is an, a built-in embed where it's very simple very minimal um, but it allows you to just take that and put it wherever you want to and it has an upsell and a downsell page already built out for you so hopefully that helps that question there okay cool barb it looks like here oh here we go not the 30 days of support yeah you explain why. Yep. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll take care of you, Barb, and I'll just go in and, and add you to that, and that'll give you that 30 days. Absolutely. Let's see here. Being added to add, being able to add comments within Facebook, within Courses and Learn Plus has been added, was told in the Facebook group that it has been. I will have to investigate that and I will go live and, and uncover that feature if it does exist. I have not seen it yet. A couple of things you can do to work around that though is they do have several, like for example, Facebook, you can connect a chat, like you can create your own little comment section and add those in. It's a bit of a pain <laughs> to be honest with you because it's like a one-off type of thing. You have to create them and embed them in every lesson. I would wait for it to come out natively if you can, if your business would allow you to wait for it. I would do that. Um, and you can always create a community that's adjunct, like it's connected to. Um, sometimes I've found that when you go through a, a course and you're on the lesson and then you see all this comment and this discussion that happens around it, it can actually distract people from the course content itself. So while com comments are great to give feedback on the lesson, there could be other ways of doing it that would distract the students less. So <clears throat> just a thought there, but I'm, it's interesting if they've added that. I, I should have known about that, so I'll have to check it. All right, Debbie has a question here. So Debbie says, I have sold eBooks up to $147, rock and roll, including the bonuses in there, but you're considering putting it into Learn for the next upgrade for maybe $197, good idea. But also you can, yeah, also you can do either way. You can do either way if you build your brand equity and build your audience. Yes, totally agree. And Debbie, you are a rock star. Awesome. Okay, support our support email address. You can email support at Start a Mom blog, and um, we we have our awesome team that can help route the questions to the right place. So support at blog.com is the easiest support address, and uh, we'll we'll definitely definitely take care of you. And Barb is saying, adding comments is integral for one of my uses for Learn Plus. I feel you. It's one of those features where, ah, like, Thrivecart's one of those, yeah, you love them, and they still frustrate you sometimes because 
it's doing so many things right, but it's because it's so close. And like, there's a few things that stick out. They can stick out like a sore thumb. And like comments was one of them. The customization is one that they've been improving over time. So it's a platform that it is totally worth being patient with because looking at something like a, a, a Sam cart, which I'm not throwing shade or speaking negatively about any other platform. Like they're all fantastic platforms. They all excel in their own ways. But uh, I think for a lot of our audience, at least who are, willing to make that one-time you know, investment and grow into it, it takes a lot of pressure off knowing you're not paying every single month and like you have a lot of that pressure on there. <laughs> thank you, Debbie. Alrighty, guys. Well, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, this format. So I'm in the process of getting the wheels turning again. We've got a whole bunch of new systems running inside of our business. I'm super excited to get back to efficiency mode and working. And yes, Adventures in Annaland, love, 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 Thrivecart, thank you. And uh, you're also an awesome, <laughs> you're a rock star in Adventures in Nanoland. Everybody go check out adventuresinnanoland.com. She is, Jill is an amazing um, creator and so much energy. It's fantastic. Uh, let's see here. Okay, hearing contradictory information. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining in live. Um, a couple things you can do is uh, make sure you're on both Susie and my mailing list, which I think you are if you uh, showed up here, um, because we have some really cool stuff coming very, very soon. I'm just going to tease that out there. And Printables by Number update is coming in the next couple of weeks. Susie and I are planning that out right now for a full on refresh and making it even better and increasing the price. So if you haven't gotten it yet and you kind of like, our style, our thing, our flow. And this is me being sick, so hopefully I'm, I'm still coherent. Uh, go and check that out at printablesbynumber.com, and I'll see you guys in a very soon live update. Take care. Oh, my email is uh, john at unbeatabletech.com. Let me add that to an overlay here. Do, 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 do. I'm still learning how to do all of this. All right, here we go, text. All right, so I put my email there. If you have any uh, issues, uh, thank you guys for your patience as well. We've been definitely going through a big um, transition period between uh, technical systems, moving over to Thrivecart Learn, moving houses, a um, whole bunch of new stuff on the team that we're working with and excited for, <clears throat> and support email. Oh, well, Barb, when you uh, get your access to support, it's all going to be inside the members area, so you won't need any emails there. So go ahead and just email me with uh, what's going on on your side, and I'll go through and make sure you get access for your 30 days. All right, you're welcome, Ken. Y'all have a wonderful day. Take care. Enjoy your weekend. Take care. Go give somebody a hug. Make the world a better place. Enjoy your Saturday. See ya.